What's up, guys? Here we go. Knuckle Mania. We're almost at fight week. We're days away from the big, big show. We are here with one half of the main event. Britton Hart, how are you doing? I am doing great. I'm super excited. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. A pleasure. Um, first and foremost, let's just kind of talk about that. How has been the media and the buzz and, you know, you fought under bare knuckle a couple of times and I know you fought on other platforms, but this has just been humongous. I can feel the buzz from afar. We can't wait to get there to Lakeland, uh, Super Bowl weekend. So from your aspect, you being one half of the main event, how has this uh, buzz been uh, for knuckle mania? You know, it, it has been a buzz. I, I, I had a conversation with a teammate earlier about it and they're like, you know, try not to get sucked up into it and follow the hype. They've seen a lot of fighters do that before. And I kind of, you know, I took everything that he said, you know, you know, as great feedback as it is. But I kind of found myself being like, well, I've been through this before. I've done several interviews, you know, especially with the Beck Rollins fight. So really, this isn't my first rodeo. Like, right. I'm familiar with BKFC. I fought there before. I know all the people. I love all the people. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. So for me to have that type of feeling and, and know, um, I think it puts me at ease. I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not. You know, honestly, if you look at Britain Hart now, you know, I, I've only gotten better and, you know, fix the flaws and like the bugs and, you know, all the, the negative things. But at the end of the day, I'm still the same person that, you know, that I have been towards people and, and people always see that. Like I'm a really real genuine down earth person. I'm not right. trying to, you know, I'm not made up right now. I don't have my hair, you know, I don't have makeup on, you know, I just got done running. It, it is kind of what it is. Um, So that's how I'm treating this fight. I'm going in here and following my dreams, but this is real life shit. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do it and, and, and be a real person doing it and kind of, and show really what that looks like and, and what it entails. So that's how I handle the media buzz. I'm like, Hey, look, you guys wanted us, you wanted a sneak peek into my life and you want to see it. Um, which, if you're watching the the episodes from the road uh, to Vance versus Hart on um, the YouTube, Bare Knuckle YouTube, you'll kind of see pieces of really who I am and kind of what that right. entails dealing with the media and everything like that, too. Great points. Great points. Well, let's kind of jump on that. You you said something that really jumped out at me. You've experienced this. You have experienced the Bare Knuckle FC squared ring and the people around it and everything of that nature. Paige Van Zant has not. Uh, we know she's been a, uh, you know, fought for UFC at the top as level, but not under the bare knuckle FC ring, no glove, all that. Do you think that is a huge advantage for you or do you just see it as something that uh, you have in the tool shed that she doesn't? I mean, I, I feel like both ways. I think that, you know, obviously I would be, you know, it's not like I'm banking in it on it and saying, oh, you know, this girl's right. nothing. She's never fought bare knuckle. You know, at the end of the day, it is bare knuckle, but I realize that. So I have that advantage because I do realize that I have the advantage because I know that this isn't some boxing match or MMA with gloves or, you know, that this is bare knuckle boxing, which is a different sport. And I right. have been there and done that. So I know that the question is, does she know that? Mm. And I don't think that she does. So it is a huge advantage and it's an advantage that way, you know, cause I I've been there and done it and, and I'm not taking, I'm still not taking it lightly. I'm not like, Done this before, you know, bare knuckle, bare fist, it's cool. I mean, I, there's an element to that, but at the same day, or at the same time, I'm working my ass off. I'm thinking about it every single day, you know, weeks out, days out from the fight. I mean, I'm still like million things going through my head. Did I prepare hard enough? Am I ready for this? Is it, you know, do I have what it takes? All those questions circulate. Right. And that lets me know that I'm that raw, real talent because for someone to sit back there and be like, oh, this is easy, another day you're going to get hurt. And that's, that's what ends up happening to some of these high level fighters that get sugar coated and get padded. You know she, you know, she is a padded person. She obviously, if you look at her, she's a padded person. And then the fact that she is babied and, and she's not going to realize that you still have to work hard and the, the real, you know, danger that we put ourselves in as fighters, when you just go in there thinking, Oh, this person's easy. That's a, that's a big no, no. Hmm. Uh, can you say, or would you agree that I would throw out there that there is a little bit of bad blood? There is some beef going into this fight. 
You know, I didn't think there was at first. I said nothing personal. I kind of like Paige Manson, actually, when I was following the UFC and in terms that I do like that she, you know, can be pretty and cute and, and still fight at a top level. You know, but then I started really following her and kind of even with this fight, paying more attention to what she said. Is that really what she's what she's after? And, and it kind of changed my opinion on it, on, on some of her um, answers. So it's like you know, you got to be, do, have, and you have to have those three things. And, and something with her doesn't really line up um, with really what she's trying to execute right now on, on her trying to say that she, you know, I don't know what she's trying to prove that she's super tough or she wasn't in the UFC. So maybe she wants, you know, when she wants to t find some, someplace else that's going to baby her and coddle her. And she's going to find out that, look, BKFC isn't doing it. They're not babying her right off the rip. She's, she's facing a vet. And she's facing a really, really hard opponent. Um, but I, so again, the bad blood comes from that. So for her to come in, you know, thinking that she has shit handed to her is like, it really bothers me. And it's kind of disrespectful too, when you're coming in, you know, like, it's like if you're at work, right? This is the best analogy. You're at a workplace okay. and you've been there for 10 years, right? And then right. one person comes in, they just got a college education and then they're like, oh yeah, here. And they come in and, and they're now your boss and they're telling you how to run shit. And you've been there for 10 years and you're like, whoa, back up again. You just got here. You got to kind of ease your way into it. And that's kind of where I find that, you know, where it's coming from for her. Like she just came in. I'm pretty sure the November 13th fight that where I fought was the first fight she even watched as far as being bare knuckle. And I think she was kind of open and candid about that. Like, oh, this is my first time watching. And it's like, damn. You know, and people have been here watching it since the very first one. And, um, you know, here she is popping up on BKFC 16. So I, I do. I, I mean, I really can't wait to shut her train up. And, like, you know, I, I'm really excited to just go and prove a huge point on the no-nos that you have when you come into bare knuckle boxing. Right, right. And a lot of things you said there. I really, really agree with what you said. Can I play devil's advocate on one is – do you, I, I've heard a lot of Bare Knuckle FC fans in the circle and a lot of the fighters kind of feel that way about Paige. But is there a good part about Paige Van Zandt coming to Bare Knuckle FC, bringing a ton of eyes to the product? You guys are main eventing a card that's not like a normal card. It is called Knuckle Mania. It is on Super Bowl weekend. This is easily going to be the biggest event in Bare Knuckle FC history. And a big reason is Paige Van Zandt. And it's awesome that you're the other side of the aisle uh, can I be the devil's advocate and say that she is bringing uh, a big something to the table? Oh, yeah. And I've said that, you know, if you watch my other. So even without you bringing that up, you know, if you watch my other interviews and other things that I've said, like I've always said when they say, what do you right. think about? What did you think about when Paige signed? And that was the very first thought. It wasn't like, oh, she sucks. She's garbage. I was like, wow, that's an awesome addition. That's a really awesome thing for BKFC. I was really super excited. I would, you know, I knew that I would eventually fight her. I really wasn't thinking I would be her first fight. <laughs> I think it was more of like something that the fans want because when they signed right. her, everybody messaged me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you guys going to fight? And I'm like, well, I'm sure we are down the road. You know, I wouldn't imagine I'd be her first fight, but, um, you know, bam, it just happened the way it did. But I, yeah, no, I do. I think, you know, she is definitely, um, you know, I, I've never said that, you know, bare knuckle made a mistake. I've never talked really bad about her, her, uh, skills and abilities as an athlete. Um, right. I think that again, it's, you know, she's never boxed and she's coming from a different world. So I, I think, you know, my, my only problem with her is that she's not taking it as serious as I, I think that she should be. Gotcha. Um, and she's not taking me as serious as I think she should be. So those are my only fair. problems with her. Right, right. Very fair. After the fight, um, can you see a look into this crystal ball and feel a way that you guys can absolutely shake hands, hug? Can you guys think you can bury the hatchet and just be uh, positive for Bare Knuckle FC, positive for female combat sports, and just almost uh, get a bond? Do you foresee that happening after the fight? I mean, that's kind of who I am at the end of the day. It is a sport. It is, you know, it's a competition. You know, we are definitely training to go and hurt each other. So, of course, we're not going to be, you know, I'm not going to pull some stunt like some other females did and go slap her ass and blow her a kiss and kiss her before a fight. I'm not doing that shit. Like, we're right. here to hurt each other. So, I'm definitely not pulling that little stunt. But, um, you know, I am. And if you see all my fights, 
I always hug and am invo- always very amiable to um, my opponent. And um, even with Brandine, like, I think I follow her on Facebook now and see some stuff. And, you know, I show her hearts all the time, you know. So that's really what I think is special about this sport. Um, I've seen it time and time again where people hate each other and yell at each other and fucking threaten to kill them the next day. And then, you know, the next day they fight and, and they walk away you know, hugs, handshakes, whatever, right. it ha- you know, whatever it does. So I-, I do like that about bare knuckle. I do see that um, happening. You know, I definitely want to give her a hug and say, thanks for coming after, you know, she loses and tell her that she, you know, still needs to stay in it and don't quit. Like I'm really excited for that pep talk for her. Um, wow. But, you know, I-, I-, I do think that, but um, yeah, I, there's really honestly, to tell you why, there's only one person that I've actually really felt like a huge resentment to that I feel like that if I fought afterwards, I would be like, freaking told you, like, don't ever bring your ass in this ring again. It was, and you really have to be on a and personal that? level. Piss me off. Who, what? Who's that one person? I'm not giving, I, like I said, I'm not giving credit to her fucking name because she's irrelevant. And okay. I, I really don't want her name to be anywhere and part of this. And then after November 13th, thir- not November 13th, after uh, February 5th, I, it will definitely be brought to light. And I'll make sure. But she doesn't deserve any focus. Um, okay. You know, she tried to get the page fight and she tried to step in and say a bunch of shit and start shit. So she got it. Didn't work out for her. But I don't need to make her name any more relevant. And I honestly... You know, I hope after, you know, after this page fight and that fight happens, her name just gets dropped off the map. But that's the only person. Like I said, if you piss me off on a personal level, it gets extremely personal for me. And I'm like, you know, in that aspect, then no. I mean, with Paige, the stuff that we have that I'm pissed off and we have bad blood is on a fight, you know, is on a on a fighting basis. It's right. She's not taking me serious as a fighter. And, um, you know, all this stuff that's in fighting. Now, if Paige wants to come and attack me as a, a my character, or she wants to say bring up some stuff from my past, if she wants to make lies and spread rumors about me, then we got a totally different story. But I haven't seen that from her yet, so I do still respect her as a fighter, and um, you know, hope that we can be friends after. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like I said, we cannot wait. Bare knuckle, uh, FC knuckle mania two five twenty one right around the corner. Uh, a couple last things, a couple fun questions at the end. We'll let you go. We know you're super busy training, getting kicking ass. We love it. Um. It, 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 I think it's easy for me to say that this fight's got a lot of juice on it. Um, a lot of fighters, they always say a training camp and training all the same and you walk in. But I would assume, right, that this fight, more than any other other before this, you're training this a little bit harder, a little bit more, running just a little bit more, uh, you know, making sure your weight's great, a little bit more. Uh, is that fair to me to say that this fight, you are putting a little bit more juice in the training camp? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's why I'm out in California right now. I know it looks like b- beautiful right now. And, you know, it seems like my whole fight camp has been utter torture. But I mean, really, it, it's been coming out of my comfort zone and, and taking a risk. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't want to put that much more into it. You know, if I was just I would have stayed in my comfort zone. You know, I have an amazing coach back in Virginia who's awesome and has helped me out big time. But I wanted to make sure that I was taking that risk um to come out here and train and, and be you know in an elite gym and have elite sparring and, and an elite trainer and elite coach come in just so you guys knew that I, i'm really putting it out there and, and believing in myself 100 percent and giving myself a fight camp that is a hundred percent focus and, and no distractions so you know it's been hard leaving my family and my job and some other things that i left um but they know the reason why. And like I said, right. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't to give everything and my 100% on February 5th. So I'm so thankful and glad to have experienced this, learned some new things. And, and like I said, you know, it's always about, for me, growth. And um, that's a lot of my, my fight names. So you'll see it's Heart 4.0 now. And that's because, I, and I kind of coming out here, having to have that growth and change. So you don't know what type of Britain Heart is going to show up on February 5th because... Hey, I'm in a whole, I'm a whole other world out here. I love it. I love it. On pay per view, Fight TV, bare knuckle. We cannot wait. Two five twenty one. All right. Like I said, we got some fun questions for you. First thing that comes to your head, okay? Got it. What is your biggest fear? Hmm. Dang. Uh, I guess time. I want. I always get wrapped up in time. So. You know, okay. time, not that I had, you know, that I don't have enough time to do what I want or that time moves by too fast. And 
or um, it goes by too slow and you just want something to be here. It, right. Just in that type of thing, you know. Um, okay. It, it, that's probably more on a deeper level. But if I have to go on like a, you know, a dumb level, I guess I'd say alligators. I don't like alligators. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, who is your all-time favorite combat sports athlete? Um. Hmm, God, there's so many, but all time, mm-hmm. I was I would go with Muhammad Ali. Keep it, Ooh. you know, all his quote. I I watch his stuff and like you know his quotes and you know I always love saying I'll show you how great I am. So <laughs> yeah, and I wear his boxers. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. That's a good one. Uh, vacation spot, tropical or cold? Tropical. Okay. Uh, on the uh, knuckle mania, what's the one fight that you're gonna tip outside the curtain? What's the one fight you gotta see you can't miss on the card? Oh, that's easy, and I'm upset that it's probably gonna be right before my page um, fight, but definitely Johnny Bedford's fight. Oh my god, yeah. I am pumped to see that one. Um, you know, yeah, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it too. I think it's going to be really, really good. I'm highly interested in that fight. Right. It's a, it's a great fight. It's funny. And I, I don't know if you saw the, the interview I had with David Feldman, he even talked about how that fight maybe could have been the main event. That fight is so good. But mm-hmm. with you and Paige, he just thought the star power with you girls and, uh, was definitely, you guys were the main event, but that fight is electric. We can't wait for that co-main. Um, who is your hero? Who's my hero? Uh. Hmm. That's a good one. I don't know. I always, I guess I really, I have a lot of, you know what? I'm going to say Kevin Smith with Smith Brothers Combat Sports. He's really okay. been my hero. He's been my hero in this fight, in, in this training camp. He's made everything stress-free. He's put a lot of strings for me, made me have the training camp and, and really just believes in me. And so, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take it there. That's a good one. Um, What's your favorite carnival food? Uh, funnel cakes. Uh, oh funnel yeah. Cakes. That's that's the right answer. That's the right answer. <laughs> I love funnel cakes. This just smell. I always like, even right now, I'm like, man, if I smelled a funnel cake, it would be really hard to say no. There you go. Um, in 2025, where will Britain Hart be? Oh, uh, say that again. In 2025, where will, where will Britain Hart be? Hmm. Let's see that. Oh, we've got some good loaded questions. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have the police diamond Gazzetti belt and I'm going to have the American belt. So I'm going to have two belts and I am, you know, at that point in time, hopefully I will be a champion. And I think that, you know, kind of being cliche, but I think, uh, you know, I was thinking about starting my own gym, but even more than that, I, I honestly want to manage fighters when I get done fighting. So oh, nice. I'll be probably 36 then. So, um, you don't know. I, I don't know if I'm really still at the top of my career, you know, in a good place, I might still push forward. But if it starts to be like, Hey, I, I did what I needed to, I proved everything. You know, I would really like to start managing fighters myself and, and wow. start my own management agency. So that nice. could be right at that time where I, I, you know, step away from fighting, you know, I have two kids. So to be able to build, you know, right now to build this big, huge future and like legacy and like really build power behind my brand to be able to step away from that in five years so I can focus on them and and helping other fighters. I think that that would be a great thing for me. That's nice. Instead of like Smith brothers, you can do like heart sisters. So yeah, (laughs) there you go. Last, but definitely not least the question at hand, what is your fight prediction? Paige Van Zandt, Knuckle Mania 2521. Uh, it's going to be a third round knockout on February 5th. And the winner goes to Britton Hart. Third round knockout. Love it. Love it. Uh, Britton, you are fantastic. We appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Uh, the floor is yours. Any kind of, uh, you know, sponsors or any kind of messages you want to get out there, it's uh, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I already shout out Kevin Smith again. Thanks for being my hero through this. Um, and I, you know, I saw my boxing coach at home, Marcus Luck, huge, you know, he checks on me every day. He's great. Wants me to grow. I love it. Um, Haas, which is Joseph Janik here at Knuckleheads Boxing and MMA. He's a been oh my god like super super critical into my transformation and, and and also i really should say he's my hero too so he's been doing a lot in just how he is as a coach um i have to say this boom you can see with a uh, fusion yep is a main sponsor for um uh knuckle mania so that's pretty cool so 
give a big shout out to them. I love them. Their supplements. I mean, you can see how much energy I have. So I take their energy mix every morning and it's been. The water is amazing, right? Like I got, I got bottles of water. I usually have it with me here at the interviews. I think I'm all sold out of it. Their waters are phenomenal. I'm a big fan of fusion CBD water. Yes, I know. I should have had one. Actually, it's locked up in the gym in the coolers right now. But um, yeah, I, I definitely love those things. I actually love everything they have. Like they, I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. They have CBD gummies that help you um, recover. I take at night. They have elderberry gummies that help you feel better about your immune system. They have the water that, you know, helps, you know, you're definitely get your water intake, but also get stuff for muscle recovery. Um, so yeah, they've just been fantastic. And I, I, I just love, they sent me a sports bra and some shorts too, that are freaking phenomenal. So Money. <laughs> that stuff is cool too. But, um, yeah, so thank them, uh, veteran farms, hit five, um, be lit organics, rich, Richie L tuck and son wood products, Afton, Afton service center. Um, I definitely have to thank contenders clothing, uh, the women of the Carolina Fight Life are going to be coming out to my fight to support. There's actually another female from that organization that's going to be on the card, too. So big shout out to Taylor Starling. Good luck and hope she shows up to do her thing. Um, you know, definitely part of the Queen Supporting Queens group. So uh, she's definitely been a huge, you know, a friend and motivator um, in my fight, my fight Please. career. Um, let's see. Who else am I forgetting? Uh I, you know, I, I, thanks to everybody really for, for believing and pushing in me. Like I, I hear other interviews from other fighters and, and it's really interesting to say that they say that their team heart. So I feel like I have a lot to prove and I have a lot of people that I want to make proud at the end of the day and that believe in me. And really this one's for you guys. Like, I thank you. You know, I know you believed in me and, and win or lose, you still were there by my side and, and loved me and believed in me. And, you know, the whole thing is let beauty come from ashes, like all those things and bad things that happened in the past, but the people that believed in me and stayed on my side and the people that are believing me on what's going to happen February 5th. Um, thank you. And you're my, you know, you're my why and my push and, you know, my kids at home, Peyton and Paris, like, you're my why this is the push for you to never give up on your dreams and don't quit even when it doesn't go your way you get back up and you fight another day and uh that's my message to everybody awesome we cannot wait we are big fans of you britain we are so excited we're almost a week away knuckle mania 2521 britain Hart main event of knuckle mania we'll talk to you soon thank you so much awesome thank you so much What's up, guys? The show keeps on rolling. We have one of our absolute favorites. We've been talking with Taylor for years now. Killer B, uh, going to be the breakout star of Knuckle Mania, badass mom, and so much more. Taylor Starlin, how are you doing? I am fantastic. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Uh, holy shit, we're almost here. It's like it's like kind of like fight week. We're getting into it. Um. First, before we start so much, and I got I got a long list for you, and we talk a lot, a little bit off the air lately. Yeah. What was the first inklet of, hey, I might be fighting on this card, on the Knuckle Mania, on this Paige Van Zandt card? Uh, when was this kind of happening? And uh, take us through it. The craziest thing is, is like, I don't want to say I had no idea, but, you know, me and you, like, we, we talked about Paige Van Zandt. I was really pressing, like, I want to go to Bare Knuckle, I want to go to Bare Knuckle, and I never heard anything, like nothing happened. So I kind of was like, ah, well, you know, I got to just keep training, keep moving on, like whatever opportunity comes will come. And I think it might have been like December 23rd. It was like right around Christmas time or right after Christmas time. I woke up to an email in my inbox that was like, here's a contract. Do you want to fight for bare knuckle on the biggest card of the year? And I was just like, absolutely. And David Arvello, like I had talked to him. So I got to give a shout out to him because I had talked to him, but I didn't think it was just like, a, hey, like this is going on. This is what I'd like to do. And then next thing you know, boom, I have a contract in my inbox. There you go. There you go. That had to be a wonderful feeling. Uh, I know how much you've wanted this and that kind of transitions transitions into this. So, yeah, we lost, you know, we talked multiple times, multiple podcasts, multiple shows, you know, mostly MMA. And then we knew that you were doing the kickboxing thing. 
And then I just, I remember, I don't know what it was. We were just talking just friendly off air and you're like, Dave, I want to do this bare knuckle thing. Like I, I think I covered it and you saw me covering it one time. You kind of hit me up. You're like, how, how do I get into this? So when was the first time you're like, oh, wow. Was it bare knuckle FC one or when was it, was it the whole page momentum? You're like, I want to be in this. Like I am the queen of bare knuckle FC. Like when did this come to be? I remember hearing about bare knuckle and this was like, it had to be like two when they, when they first started like really okay. she's getting in the video but um uh when they first started i heard about it and i was like what there's like bare knuckle fighting and i remember mentioning it to my head coach at the time and he was just like if you want to do that you're a fucking idiot <laughs> what so it kind of just was like okay you know he's my coach i got to listen and do what's smart and but I remember I just kept like holding on. I was like, I would do that. I would do it. I would do it for sure. And then when Paige signed, that was kind of like the tipping point of like, hell yeah, like I'm I'm going to do everything I can to get to bare knuckle. And right. I just have always had it in the back of my head. Like, I want to go do that. I really want to go do that. It sounds like my kind of fight. It is. It definitely is. And another one, you're just, uh, you're making this too easy for me. So now you do, you, you've got a new coach or a head coach and a new training facility uh, you know, I know a lot happened through the pandemic and the whole, you know, 2020 year, but how much of a perfect match has this made this transition to this gym? And you told me how great this has been, especially now going into bare knuckle. It just seems like a perfect marriage. It is. Um, so I actually knew Keith Richardson. He's my head coach. Now I knew Keith Richardson um, just training locally. Like he had come to Jimmo and I was training at Jimmo and um, through fights and all of that stuff. And um, I actually moved to the town that the gym's in and I ran into him at the grocery store and he was like, why don't you come and like train sometime? <laughs> okay. And I went over there and, uh, uh, trained and then I was like, can I come again? And can I come again? And can I come again? And then it just turned into like, um, I was like, so I really want to like train here full time. Like that would, I would love it. And it was just, I think it's nothing to knock any of the other gyms. Jim is amazing. It's one of the best in the world. Dime is amazing. One of the best in the world. Um, but I feel like you just said, you need something like you need the perfect dynamic in all areas. And I felt like sometimes at Jimmo or at Dime that there was something missing. Like I'd go in there and there was just something that wasn't complete to my puzzle. Right. Um, at Modern Warrior, because I trained at Modern Warrior. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's, it's called Modern Warrior. And Keith Richardson's the owner and he's my head coach. And I, like the first day, like everybody's so kind, so loving, so supportive, even when they don't know you, everybody in there works really hard. Everybody in there is super talented. And I just clicked right in and they're like my family. So it's amazing. Definitely. I, I definitely think it's a stat out there. Like 75% of good relationships start in a supermarket. So you kind of, it, it worked out, right? Right. Um, let's kind of get into it. So Paige Van Zandt and Britain Hart's the main event. But I, you know, have been a total um, positive about there's not one female fight on this card. There are two. And I think you have this opportunity of becoming the breakout star of this card. So much eyes on it. And there's more I kind of want to get into that. But I want you to kind of grab this and say there's not one female fight. There's two. Like we yeah. have a huge featured fight, a big stage uh, you, who knows what happens in the main event and with your fight, if that can lead to something, who knows? I just want to kind of really get it out there that there's okay. I love the main event. Can't wait. Just talk to Britain. It's awesome. Uh, Paige, I'm a huge fan of Paige Van Zandt, actually more than m most people, but I want this to be known that there's not one, there's two female fights in this card. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's such a huge opportunity. Um, it, it's just like so crazy to me. I'm like main card. I'm on it. Um, it's going to be really exciting. And um, I feel like a lot of people like don't realize how hard the females go. Like some people really don't understand. Like the females go in there and they are out for blood. It's like sharks in, the, in uh, tainted water. Like we are <laughs> so to be on this monumental card is such a huge card for Paige Van Zandt. I'm so excited and I'm, I'm ready to go in there and like, you know, people know Paige Van Zandt, people know Britain Hart now. And it's just like, I want to go in there and then be like, who in the hell is that? And I'm going to go make a statement. So I'm super excited. Absolutely. That's, you kind of nailed it there. Like, 
There's so many eyes. Uh, the, she, everything we're hearing that Shaquille O'Neal is going to be in the building. He's going to do maybe commentary for a couple fights. I know a lot of celebrities already. I know a lot of fighters that are coming to this. A lot of like UFC big name fighters. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a packed house. A lot of celebrities in the building. Like, what would it mean for you personally? And then almost, you know, in your career to be like, people are leaving the show. So let, let me kind of go back. Bare Knuckle FC 14 was... The main event was Jim Allers and Luis Palomino for the title, but everyone left that night about Uli Diaz and the fastest knockout ever. Like that's all people talked about and no disrespect to the main event, but Uli Diaz stole the show. What would it mean for you that for that Taylor Starlin would steal this show at Knuckle Mania? Um, it would mean everything. Like it's just like I work so hard and um, especially like fighting on this huge card and having people see like the media and like seeing the fight card and like people that don't know me, like, um saying things like who is this this is just some random girl like i'm ready to go and like show people that i have what it takes to be there and i have what it takes to put a statement like a cherry on top of that card like i'm gonna set it off and i'm so excited is there a celebrity or someone that you're like i kind of hope he or she is there like i kind of like I, hey mr icy hot shaquille o'neal are you in the <laughs> building what's up like i want to is who who is that person you're like hey uh that would be pretty oh, good that they're there in the building man it would be anthony Kiedis. And so if people don't know who he is, that's the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. If you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I see him at UFC fights all the time. And I have this like little dream, like, what if he just like happened to be at the bare knuckle fight? I would, I would pass out. Like I would pass out. Well, hopefully <laughs> after your fight, not before it or during it. All right. <laughs> if I, no, that would, I, hey. I have to, I got to I hold it in until after the show and then fangirl. And you're totally right. He is. He's a big combat sports fan. Like he's there a lot front row at a UFC events. And right now there hasn't been any fans in America, you know, from the last 10 months, there's going to be fans here at this show. You never know. He could be like, Hey, I kind of want to come out to this. That would be pretty cool. Like I, I'm telling you, my life would just be. Yeah. Before get me, I'm done. <laughs> Talking about that in life. Um, kind of nothing we talked about a little bit off air is about your kids. Um, two awesome boys. Uh, you know, you kind of mentioned that the older one is starting to like ask you or kind of like, mom, you really like doing this and, and bare knuckle and fighting and kind of what it goes. Uh, don't want to go a total Oprah moment on you, but like, what would it mean as being this badass mom and setting everything up for the kids and for you and making sure everything is good for kind of their future and your future? Man, I can like feel the emotions like already just like, it would be insane. Um because every single day I'm constantly preaching to them, like, go for your dreams, go for your dreams. What do you want to do? What makes you happy? If that's what makes you happy, you do it. You, you go for it. And, um, finally, like I, they knew I fought, um, and it's, it's hard to kind of break down, you know, dreams <laughs> to like, I try to really explain like what I do and it's my dream and it makes me happy to them. And, um, but sitting with my son and talking about all of that stuff and, seeing that they understand and they know that it makes me happy. Um, it would mean a lot to me because I tell them all the time, like there's some days that we go to the gym and they don't really want to go, and, <laughs> but they go and they're, they're the best and they behave so well and they enjoy it and they watch and they play. But I can say like oh, those days, like this is what it was for and you can go for your dreams and just don't give up. And that's the most important thing. Like, of all the things that I could teach my children, it would just be to like work hard for your dreams and your goals and you can do it. So it's, that is like the biggest thing. I can't wait. I asked my son if he's going to watch it. He might be in bed by then. Um, but he said he, he wants to watch it and he's excited. He keeps asking me about it. So I'm ready to put on a show for them more importantly than anybody No, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That hits home for sure. Um, all right. So we, we did talk about it them a little bit but nothing major details or you know who you have or rooting for the main event is Paige Van Zant and Britton Hart uh we know that you've had a past kind of relationship or trained a little bit with Britton uh huge opportunity for her it seems like she has everything to gain in this fight all the exposure if she can get a win in the biggest main event of knuckle mania against Paige Van Zant who's a celebrity superstar especially in the combat sports world that would be humongous Paige has all the pressure she's kind of supposed to win and i think she's going to be a heavy favor going into this fight i would love your take Paige van zant and britain hart in the main event uh okay well if you i mean everyone kind of knows i'm team Hart. 
Um, I love Brynn. I know her. So it's really like it's close to home for me. And um, just like, for instance, I was watching the um, Road to Knuckle Mania of um, the video where it's like showing leading up to the fight and Britain hard side and Paige's side. And let me just tell you, like the first episode watching Britain Hart hang her heavy bag on her kid's swing set so that she could get work in. Right. Like it made me tear up because like I, I do stuff like that and I'm a mom and I know that feeling of like having to work a job, having to train, fight, like do everything that you do on top, like on top of this all. So um, it really hit hard for me. And Britain Hart has pure fire in her soul. And that's just something that can't be like, and, I, and I'm not to say that Paige doesn't have fire in her soul, but it's different. It's different when you're a mommy and and one of my favorite quotes ever, Britain Hart told me, and it has to do with fighting. And she would say, your why has to be bigger. When you go mm. in the fight, your why has to be bigger. And now when I fight, I go in there and I, I remember that saying like every single time that I fight, Britain Hart's quote, find like find your why and your wow. why bigger than the why across from you. And wow. yeah, it's just like just I really I think it's gonna be a great fight. I think Paige is gonna be tough. I think Britain's gonna be tough. I think Paige is a world class fighter. She's fought some of the top girls in the world. She trains at the top facilities. I think it's gonna be really, really tough. Um, but I'm team Hart. <laughs> There you go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I cannot wait. It's going to be a great fight. Um, I just hope that the fight itself uh, kind of just moves female combat sports forward, and especially Bare Knuckle FC female fights. There's only been usually like one on a card and maybe every other card. So I think this is so vital for going forward for females in Bare Knuckle. And with, like I said, with you being on the card as well, with two major fights on it, and you never know. Like I said, there, if Paige goes really well and you have this you know, bang out performance. They could really match you guys up quick and, you know, being on the same card, stuff like that happens. That's just how it happens. So it's a really, really big opportunity for all four of you. I know it's like, I'm going to fight and then I'm going to literally like run out there and get my seat so that I can watch. Because like you said, um, I love Britain Hart and have all of the respect in the world for her, but that's my future right in front of me about to fight, you know? So I right. want I go fight, I get out, I sit, and I watch carefully. You know? There you go. Uh, we'll talk to you for a little bit more. We appreciate your time, Taylor. It's fight week for you. We cannot wait. Uh, I want you to kind of jump into that. Jump into how has the Bare Knuckle FC, uh, you know, high brass has treated you uh, about traveling down to Florida, sunny Florida. It has been beautiful all weekend long. Uh, it's cold up north and, and in some odd places. It's going to be beautiful. We know that you're staying in Orlando. They're fighting in Lakeland at the RP Funding Center, a really nice, cool arena doing stuff in Super Bowl weekend. And it's just crazy. It's bananas, they might say. Yeah. So how have this whole, you know, process and the Bare Knuckle FC? Because I always hear all the fighters, they do say this about Bare Knuckle FC is that it's a family. Like you kind of get into their circle and they treat you well. They communicate with you well. And moving forward, they really want the best for you. So how has it been so far working with Bare Knuckle? Um, it's been amazing. They definitely are on top of everything. And it's really easy. Like um, I can say I have fought, I'm, <laughs> I fought for another top organization before and it was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> People are always calling. It never stops here. <laughs> I was surprised my phone hasn't rang yet. Um, but I fought for another top organization and it put a bad taste in my mouth. Like it made me like, uh, I don't know if I can handle working with another like top organization like that. Just, it was just really difficult. And, but bare knuckle, like they're on top of everything. They let you know everything. And it's not like it's last second. Like they let you know everything everything's super detailed. If you call one of them, they answer their phone, anything that you have questions about. They're so nice. So amazing. I'm really excited to go and meet all of them and put on a show for them. Um, and I'm really thankful that they are giving me this opportunity. I'm just super pumped. Absolutely. We can't wait. Um, on Friday, February 5th, uh, it's going to be crazy knuckle mania in Florida. Um, okay. Last, what would you want the Bare Knuckle FC fans, the Fight Bananas community, what would you want them to know you going into it? And what's the one word, if you had to put everything in together, that after you leave the ring, the square circle, which is beautiful, it's so high, it's higher than what people think. It's like such on a platform, beautiful light. It's this beautiful spot. It's really cool. You're going to absolutely love it. Leaving that ring, what would you want 
the people to know, bare knuckle media fans, what's the one word you would want them to know about Taylor Starling? Ooh, the one word. That's so hard because there's so many words. I just, <laughs> um, I always call myself tenacious. That's okay. one word I always say describes me is tenacious, and I have a huge heart. And um, when I fight, I leave everything, mind, body, soul, everything in in the arena. Like it's go time. I want people to know that I live for this shit. Like I live and breathe fighting. And I really believe that I epitomize like what it means to be a fighter, right? All aspects of life. And I want people like I want to display that like I'm ready to go and show like, like this shit is my life. So that's what I want people to know. <laughs> Tenacious life. We got it. We got it. Bad bitch. <laughs> Meg the stallion vibes like no. Um, but yeah, really, I really am excited. And um, I live and breathe this every single day and i love it so right. much. so i really right. to display that in the way that i fight like i said so we've talked to you a couple times a couple times pre-fight and you know we've been seeing all your stuff on instagram great handle uh taylor is it killer b it's tay w starling <laughs> tay w starling it's like your instagram is on fire it just seems like this camp has been on point, like everything, uh, you know, the movements, uh, my guy, John Rafford saw you up there a couple weeks ago. He said, you are looking phenomenal. We've talked, it just seems like this might be, if I can say maybe the best camp you've ever had going into a fight, you feel great. You feel on weight. Uh, we can't wait. We're just excited now. We're, it's just time. Everything is kind of behind, uh, the media now soon is going to be behind all the training is behind. It's almost just fight time. It's just almost toeing the line now. Yeah, I'm thinking like this is the best. This is the fun part. This is where it's like I'm almost there, but I'm not there yet. And then when I get there, and like all the butterflies start kicking in, like wow, I'm here, and it's just crazy how like when you get the opportunity and you start a fight camp, you're like, oh my god, I have so long. It's gonna be weeks and weeks of training, and I did all the work, the hard, hard work, and everything, and now it's about to be over. Like it's bittersweet because I'm like, oh man, like the fight's already here. Like I've been just enjoying how hard I've been working for this. Like I really have just enjoyed working so hard for this and it's really exciting that it's about to pay off. And wow. you're right, like I've been training insane. Like I have been putting the work in and it's a different tailor. And there's a lot of people who can say what they want about me and how I fight, blah, blah, blah. But even on the phone, we've talked before and I'm, I'm not the same person I was shit even when i signed my bare knuckle contract i'm a completely different person than then i'm a completely different person from yesterday like wow evolving so um i can't wait to go and put on a show and show everybody the new killer b killer b here we go we cannot wait we're so pumped um like i said i really do think that you have the absolute potential of being the breakout star of this show. There's a really big triple main event. Uh, I think those fights are going to be great. There's a couple of fights in the undercard I really like as well. Uh, my guy, Dylan Klecker, I think he's about to go 2-0 in the heavyweight division. Um, there's a really good fight in the 135-pound division in the undercard with Lambert and Guy. So there's so much great content. I think everyone's going to be saying killer B after Knuckle Mania. I, That's my two cents. I agree. There we go. Well, we appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Have a good week. Uh, travel safe. And we'll see you in a couple of days. All right. Thank you so much. I love you guys all. Thank you for the support. And I can't wait to see you in Florida. There we go. Talk to you soon. What's up, guys? Uh, happy Sunday out there. I'm Dave Inock and Fight Bananas. Uh, my man does indeed that much of an introduction. Brandon Lambert, how you doing, brother? I'm doing excellent, man. I appreciate the time today. Absolutely. Uh, most of the time with all the podcasts, we've had a we had a good 45 to an hour podcast a couple months back. Talked to a lot of guys. I usually have so many notes and things I want to hit on. You, I don't have a lot. I know it's like, let me get an open mic. Let me just hit record and see where it goes. Uh, I've been loving, if I can throw out the word, the uh, the campaign, uh, campaign, like you've just been on fire. Like you've been wanting this fight for a long time. You got it. Um, just take me through this process, man. I'm just so pumped for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing, really. So um, it all started when I when I left Puerto Rico. <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry, I was over in Puerto Rico training with Elvin Brito because I was supposed to fight at Toe the Line in December. Right. And I left about, I don't know, three or four weeks before that fight and um, came back to Florida. Well, I was sitting in the in the airport at, in, in Puerto Rico 
and I text Tyler Goodjohn because I knew he was coming to the States and I heard he was coming to Southern Florida. So I figured, oh, you know, we can we can hang out and do whatever, because in my mind, I was thinking that him and Elvin were going to fight eventually. Sure. So, um, you know, I chatted with him, became friends with him or whatever and told him, you know, hit me up whenever you want. And then there was a, a, con, or a, a post from his manager, Kevin Smith, that posted about him. And all I said on it was, I hope he's not coming over here just to get knocked out. And the reason that I said that is he's a pure boxer and he likes to duck and put his head out in front all the time. And he doesn't protect himself very well. And, you know, with a real actual bare knuckle fighter, he could get KO'd. And that's what I meant by it. He took offense and then started challenging me to a fight. And the marketer in me, I seen an opportunity in that, and I just kind of ran with it. So I started doing all kinds of shit. I made memes, posters, videos, anything I could think of. And I tagged David Feldman, Nate Shook, and Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships in every single one of those. Yep. So I ended up going um, to England after the Biloxi fight because uh, I thought it was near Christmas because I thought that Tyler was going to go back to, to England. Right. I was going to go to where he was training at and, and trolling there live. <clears throat> well, he wasn't there. And the country shut down the day that I got to London. So I stayed for about a week or so and I couldn't get any training in. So I left and thank God I left because I got home, I believe December 28th and I was driving in my truck, um, going to the gym, I think. And I got a text from Nate Shook to say, can you make 135 pounds by February 5th? And I said, Nate, I'll make any weight you need me to make. And then a couple days went by. Um, he called me back. He gave me a couple names. I was like, I don't give a fuck who it is. Let's get it done. And then um, that's when Jared Grant's name came up. And I was under the impression that we were waiting on him to sign his contract. So I messaged him. That pissed him off. And then that started the whole drama with me and him. Brandon, so much there. So much there. First and foremost, uh, I'm, I am a huge fan of what you have done the last six weeks. Some people might not like it. Some people do like it. The people who don't, I don't give up. You know what I'm saying? I love what you did. There was something that out there in the universe that you wanted and you're like, Hey, I'm going to go get it. So for one big ups to you of the, the ongoing onslaught of just throwing your name out there and saying, hey, I want this. Someone come get me. And you made it happen. There's not a lot of people out there. I love the doers. You know, people can complain and say they're not going to do this and say, hey, they didn't pick me. They don't want me. You went and did it. So big mad props to that. All right. I appreciate Two is, you said 135. I, you know, we like I said, we talked a little bit back in the day and all that stuff. I never thought 135 was in that area that you did want to go. So when they said that, was there a little bit of like, damn, I, Nate, I would rather be at maybe a 145 or one even 155. It, but you were just, no, let me get my foot in the door at 135. Yeah. After like in the moment, no, nah, he could have asked me to go fly weight at one, 125. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> afterwards I started thinking about it and I was like, man, that's a lot smaller than I really want to go. Like my, my main goal, is to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. But <laughs> now the main goal is to be uh, 145. Um, there's no champion at 145. There's not a lot of fighters that are 145. Right. I really want to fight Dat Win, and I want to fight him at 145. So, what the goal is is to go out here, put a good showing on with Jared, with Jared, um, prove that I belong here, move to 145, and I'd like to face Dat in the opening round of the 145 pound tournament because I do not believe he's going to get past Bedford. Okay. Okay. Um, when you got that text from Nate, did you know that it was going to be the, what did you know at that time was knuckle mania out there? Did you know it was the page Van Zant car, the triple, you know, main event, you knew all that. Okay. Um, so hit me up on that. How do you tell me that? Um, <clears throat> at first I was like, okay, this has got to be the Tampa card. I didn't know knuckle mania at the time. I knew it was page. Right. <clears throat> but then I thought after, after I, after I'd accepted it, I thought maybe, they were going to put a toe the line card on. Ooh, okay. So I was like, okay, well, maybe they're going to put me on toe the line. So then I got kind of hesitant because I wouldn't have took a 135 fight at toe the line. Correct. But I didn't mean to cut you off, so keep on. No, all good, brother. All good. So now, after the fact, a days or a week later, knowing you're on the Bare Knuckle FC card, knowing that you're on the Knuckle Mania card with a triple main event and all that stuff, how did that feel? Like, holy crap, I 
this is it. Like you're the biggest show. And for me, like I said, I talked to so many people in the circle, so many people in the industry, especially here in the bare knuckle world. You're like, you're the people's main event. Like you're the people's main event. Um, I love the, uh, there are two female fights. I love this Taylor Starlin matchup. It's right there. My heavyweight friend, Dalen, uh, Dalen Klecker that we were up in Mississippi with. He's my guy. I'm a big fan of that. The triple main event is awesome. It's, that's why it's knuckle media. But right now you and Grant are like the people's main event. I mean, we're, we're getting talked to talked about more than, more than the other 135 pound fight. So I, I think right now we're supposed to be on the prelims. I think we should be on that main car. We should open up that main car because there's going to be a ton of people tuning in. We got to wait on people to, to get off of work and shit. It's Friday. People want to see this fight. They want to see what I can bring out. They want to, 99% of them want to see me get fucked up. And the other 1% are the one day one riders that, that really know what I'm about. And they know that I'm going to go out there and take this opportunity to the fullest. Um, I mean, I'm in a no lose situation right now, man. Like I go out there and get fucking KO'd. Big deal. That's what everybody expected. But I go out there and I knock this motherfucker to the ground. There's a new king in town. Uh, Very true. I, I have accomplished everything that I've told everybody I was going to do. And I keep telling people I am going to knock out Jared Grant. So when I do that on February 5th, I fulfilled all my prophecies. And I'm going to be the 145 pound bare knuckle world champ by the end of 2022. Wow. Love it. Um, so I'm going to bring this back out. So this is the first time, like I said, we talked before this, but I met you at this event Yep. and I thought it was a great card. Palomino stole the show in the main event. Dylan, like I said, was in the co-main, looked phenomenal, a heavyweight with a second, third round knockout, I believe. But afterwards, you know, I remember in the hotel room, me and you were just chatting, we we're talking about life and I saw a fire and I was like, man, I was like, you see a lot of these competitors and they were just like, I felt if I could say happy to be there. Uh, you, it, I don't get that feeling from you. You almost, I feel like, you know, you should be there and you almost want to make sure more of a statement than I'm just, I'm happy to be on this card. What do you say to that? Yeah, I'm not happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> I'm destined to be here and mm. I prove why I'm destined to be here. Everything that's happened to me in my life has pointed me in this direction and pointed me to this moment. So, I mean, there's going to have to be an act from God to stop me from fulfilling my prophecies come February 5th. <clears throat> um, I have a feeling that my children are going to be watching and there's no way in fucking hell I'm going to have my children watch their dad get his ass whipped. It's not going to happen. Respect that. Respect that. Uh, all right, let's get into kind of the Jared Grant situation. Um, he's 2-0 and underneath the banner. Uh, I really like what he's doing. I, Kind of, he's got a perfect, or I don't want to say perfect. He's got a really good bare knuckle, uh, you know, strategy. Um, there, there, it's different from like you said, boxing or mixed martial arts. There's just different little uh, with the clinch and all that nature. So, man to man, what do you think Grant brings to the table? And would you love to see him going forward underneath underneath the bare knuckle uh, umbrella? Or you're like f him. <laughs> I mean, I don't give a fuck what he does. To be honest with you, I care about me, um, right? But, I mean, <clears throat> he brings in speed. He's fast. Um, his timing's good. He's a good counter puncher. Um, looks like he knows the game pretty good, you know. And, I mean, he's number three. So, it's not like I'm coming in here and I'm fighting some dude that's lost every fight. Like, I'm fighting an undefeated guy. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, I mean, I think that says a lot about the aura that I bring is that they're not putting me in there with a bum. I may have called him a bum a couple of times, but we all know, you know, I mean, he's been in there and he's, he's beat two people. He's, he's put two people. So I have, I have a test in front of me and we're going to, we're going to see how we're going to see what, what happens. Every, everybody's question is, can, can Malo fight? And we're going to find out February 5th. <laughs> um, so we text to get on. You're like, you told me you're with someone. I don't want to name drop him to name drop it. But almost it's my point of you train with the best people in the world day in, day out of uh, sparring partners and even coaches as well, which is maybe one of the most underrated things, I think, in combat sports, trainers and coaches and game plans going into a fight. Hit on that for me. Like um, to me, you're a very lucky man training with some of the best in the oh, yeah. business. Uh, I think you got great people around you and I would love for you to hit on that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, as everybody knows, uh, King, King Mo's my head coach. Um, yeah. Training with him for about a year and a half. Ever since I moved to Florida um, through my divorce and stuff, um, <clears throat> brought me out of a depression and things like that. So 
more than, you know, got me ready for this. He's got me ready to move forward with the next part of my life. You know what I mean? Because I got pretty devastated, you know, 16 months ago with my wife taking everything from me, all my possessions and my children. So when I got here, I was in a very bad, dark place. All right. Now I'm going to be appearing on a pay-per-view. So the thanks that I have for that, I want to give to King Mo Lawal for that for sure. Um, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I'm, I'm training. I'm training my striking with him, my, you know, um, footwork with him, my boxing and my, uh, my, my striking with coach Gabriel Oliveira. And then, uh, I have Brock Weaver, um, very close to me. He's going to be actually uh, coming out with me. He'll be with me in my corner as well. So, um, he's actually on his way over here now so we can do a little bit of movements, things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been blessed with being able to be around a really good team from American top team. Um, since I've been into Florida, I've been welcomed by everybody. It's been awesome. Uh, I mean, I've even been able to train with, you know, Jake Bostwick, uh, back in the day. So, um, not, not for this camp, but right before he made his debut, you know, I, I was in the same camp with him for a little while. Um, amazing guy. I love that guy. Maureen Shea. She's, a, she's amazing as well. Yeah. And Derek Santos, you know, I can't, I, I started, I really started my boxing with him. Cause you know, as everybody knows, I'm not a boxer. So he was basically my first boxing coach. Um, and then I moved over to Puerto Rico with Elvin Brito. Um, and Elvin actually has really got me into my bare knuckle style. Um, so big shout out to him and coach C uh, Cesar, uh, Manabo, uh, Puerto Rico. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've been able to be around legends of the sport. Right. And people that have been exactly where I'm at now and made it to the highest levels of the game. So I'm not walking in there blind with somebody that's wanting to ride my coattails or somebody that's never been where I'm at. Like I'm surrounded by knowledge. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And I think that the universe has put me in this position. That's why I am so confident when I go in there that I'm, I'm going to perform the way that I know I need to perform. And I'm going to make the statement that I need to make to make sure that everybody knows that I'm fucking here. Love it. Love it. Um, and I would love for you to expand on it and you don't have to, some details if you don't want to, I totally get like when you said you were in a horrible place 16 months ago and King Mo really kind of in a way got you out of it. Like, uh, did he just by training? Did he do it by like, Hey man, you're going to be, we need you in the big dance one day, or we're going to have you in a pay-per-view in a year. Did he kind of, uh, not promise you anything, but like kind of get you going like, Hey man, you get back to training. We can get you anywhere you want to go what was it to kind of get you out of that spot. Um, I mean, what it was basically was it wasn't even anything with fighting, to be honest with you. It okay. was more like, um, you know, I, I, I got here, like, I think I was 118 pounds when I arrived here. Wow. And before this divorce and shit, I was like 185, you know. So I was on the brink of death. And I think Mo could see that. And um, he just was a friend. I mean, we would rarely talk fighting, to be honest. I almost thought he hated talking about fighting, <laughs> right? You know, because like he'll go to he'll go to corner, at, you know, in the UFC or Bellator, and then he's back home, and then like he don't he gives all of his shit away, like he doesn't he doesn't care about any of that stuff, you know. So no, we really he never really seen me as an athlete or as a fighter at that point. And then um, how it all really happened, it, it, this is fucking crazy, but how it all happened was the fucking Paul brothers. I was supposed to fight. Um, I was supposed to fight Logan Paul in a Bellator event in a, in the coming future, right before COVID happened. So I I had Bellator actually got me set up with my medicals in California. So I flew to California from here, <clears throat> got my medicals done in March. As I was in the office getting my medicals done, they started closing down the state. So right. they were they almost kicked me out of the office. They're like, "Yeah, you're gonna have to come back." And I'm like, "I fly back to." To florida today i can't do this so they actually called my boy uh ian matthews and was like hey um you know we got your fighter in here da, da, da. he's like yeah can you hurry up and get him done please blah 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 so that was the only way i even got a license to go in in, in the into california and so i came back to florida and i was all excited you know and i i, I came over to mo's house i was like mo i got my i got my 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 fight license like i'm gonna be able to fight you can be my trainer and we kind of got into it because he just like didn't he wasn't receptive to it at the, at the time because like I said he really didn't view me as like that athlete that fighter because 
He hadn't seen me hit pads. He hadn't seen me working out. I had, you know, I was fucking almost dead in body weight. So after about two or three months of me working with Phil Daru, packed on my, my muscle, uh, you know, got, got to moving, started hiring other coaches. He seen that I was serious and then he started training me. And then once he started training me, he seen that I was actually had the ability to do this. Right. And we've been doing it ever since. And, you know, I've been telling him like, I'm going to fight bare knuckle. I'm gonna fight bare knuckle. And he's like, yeah, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, but <clears throat> nobody. And you have to admit this. You didn't either. You nobody, nobody thought that I was going to get signed bare knuckle fighting championships. <laughs> I'll be hundred percent honest. I thought we were going to see you at toe the line yeah. and it was kind of like a contender series. It was, Hey, if you do your work at toe the line, yeah, they're going to move you up. You just got too much going. Uh, I, I, you can communicate fantastic. I think you got to, you know, the whole thing. I think you got the whole look. I'm like, Oh, he's going to go to toe the line, get a W come out to bare knuckle C. And you know, I don't want to take too much of the curtain. We talked a little bit before it was announced. I was like, man, he did it. I was like, I, I was just like, in a way I was just pumped for you. And then just like, man, I, it's just the story. It's the, you put your mind to it. Like it's this, it's a legitimate, great story to teach kids, to teach anyone down in the dumps, anything you put your mind to it. You can get it done. Like that's just, that's life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was, it took a lot of work and a lot of people would have given up. Um, but I just had a faith and I had a, had a passion and, you know, like, and I still want to fight like, I want Tyler Goodjohn. If they would, if they, if I win this fight and they would allow me to fight Tyler Goodjohn, I would fight Tyler Goodjohn at any weight that he wanted to, and I would still put up that ten thousand dollars because wow. I, know for a fact, I put Tyler Goodjohn to sleep. Um, so I really want that fight. So if Mr. Feldman's listening or watching this, if I knock out Jared Grant, please give me Tyler Goodjohn. There we go. <clears throat> we'll do that ten k challenge for sure. But um, yeah, dude. I mean, just nobody really thought that I was going to do this. Um, sure. And I knew in my heart that I would, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm very thankful that people stuck by me that, that did stick by me because I was talking crazy, you know, like <laughs> look at my social media. You're like, this dude's nuts. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I had a vision when I was on my shrooms. I had, I used to micro do sh those shrooms cause I battled severe depression. So um, with my depression, I would do shroom Saturdays <clears throat> and I would microdose all day long. And I envisioned this and I didn't envision wow. toe the line. I envisioned BKFC. And that's why, like when we, they were talking about toe the line in December, I was a little bummed out. And then I was really bummed out because I went through four opponent names. I never talked to Nate. Nate never gave me a name, but my management gave me a name like every other week. And I was in Puerto Rico training and we'd, we'd look at, we'd look at film and I'd be training for him and then boom, another name. So now I got to fuck up my training, you know, and right. been training camp in like fucking a decade. So <clears throat> I was getting aggravated. And I think that's why I ended up coming back to Florida. Cause I was just like, fuck man, like I have to do something. And my company was kind of struggling at that time. And I was away and I needed to come back and fix that because, you know, I, I was stressing about the money situation so when I came back, I got my company on track and then I just started training. And then um, when I after I something told me to go to go to England and then the day that I came back, I, I mean, it was a spur of the moment thing to come back too. And the day after I came back, I got the call to fight in the BKFC. And if Great. if COVID hadn't have been around. My business probably wouldn't have done as well as it has. And I wouldn't have gotten this opportunity. So if this would have been a regular year, it's hard telling what would have happened, you know? So right. everything has happened to lead me up to this point. So when you see somebody with that drive and that passion, don't look at them like they're crazy. Look back and see the path that they've been taking and see the situations that they've either been in and overcame or changed or whatever. And cause I mean, brilliance and, and courage seems like insanity to cowards. 100% agree. And I've always said that. And um, I've always been a star in my mind. And February 5th, I'm going to become a motherfucking superstar. I promise you. Love that. I, I almost want to end it with that. It's like the uh, Seinfeld George Costanza. When you nail it, you leave, you know. But there, I do want to hit on something so much, which I love. Um, 
you know, one of your guys in combat sports right now, maybe the biggest superstar in the game after knocking out Conor McGregor, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Uh, I just love what he does, the family man, and then the whole, the good foundation. And then, of course, we see you a couple days after his knockout of Conor McGregor. I'm going to say that again, knockout of Conor McGregor. Um, we see your post saying, hey, man, I'm going to put up my purse to the good foundation. And I just think I want more people to hear it. It should be shouted on top of a mountain and mad props and mad respect to you. So I would love for you to take it away with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Dustin, Dustin runs the uh, Good Fight Foundation and uh, he does a lot of good for, you know, uh, underprivileged, uh, underprivileged youth in his area and uh, other communities around his area. And I, I think it's fantastic. You know, a lot of guys will get all this money and they'll buy fancy cars and, and big houses and they'll flash jewelry and all this. You know, DP dresses nice. He keeps his family in a, in, in a well-established home, but he's not out spending millions on himself. He don't have yachts and Ferraris and shit. He's out giving back to the community. I'm not fighting for money. Um, I don't care what David Feldman offers me for any fight that he ever offers me. I'm going to take it. I, I'll fight for free. But the money that I'm going to make through Bare Knuckle, I am going to donate 100% of those purses for all of my career in Bare Knuckle um, to the Good Fight Foundation. Um, that's my promise to DP. DP has been phenomenal to me. Um, fucking phenomenal to me when he didn't have to be. So um, I really love and cherish what he's doing. I want to be... I want to be in that category. Like I want to, I want to be known as like a plant, uh, whatever the guy that gives away stuff. Cause I've, yeah. I've been very giving. Um, and, uh, I just want to see other kids get a, get a chance. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. so yeah. So for my BKFC career, whether it's just this fight or if it's for 40 fights, um, every dime that I make from BKFC is going to go to the good fight foundation. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. Uh, mad respect. Like I said to you for that, one and on this man it's fight week uh friday knuckle mania 2521 we've uh we've heard you say it so many times fight tv bare knuckle app pay-per-view it's everywhere if you don't know how to go get it go get it you know what i mean it's just it's plastered um you can go to my for, and it's in my bio you can click right on my bio and i would love for that my answer there you go and uh, yeah let, um after this send it to me and i'll put it on all this the I'll podcast as well we'll get it out there with your your stick right um Love for you to take 30 seconds and tell the people who are iffy about going to the event, are iffy about going to the pay-per-view. Um, I don't care about any other fight. I care about Grant versus Lambert. Give me 30 seconds and uh, let's, let's sell some pay-per-views. Well, I mean, you're going to see a, a, a real-life movie. Like, you can't write this script. I came out of nowhere. I came off of Instagram, and I'm coming into a pay-per-view to fight the number three guy in the world. One of us is going to get knocked out. <clears throat> one of us is going to have to go home and rebuild their career. You may never see one of us again. The other guys will become a superstar because there's not that many people at 135 that's challenging for this belt. There's three people, Reggie, and then there's two other people that you're going to be watching on that pay-per-view, and I'm sorry to, 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 to mention them, but I have to, and that's Johnny Bedford and Dat Win. Johnny Bedford will KO Dat Win if Dat Win even makes it on the scale. And then... When you have a guy that has nothing to lose, how are you going to beat him? I have nothing to lose. I'm in a no-lose situation. If I, if I get KO'd, it's absolutely expected. But when I don't get KO'd and I do the KOing, the whole crowd's going to blow up. People in the audience that are at home are going to blow up. The buys are going to blow up because they're going to want to get that replay because I promise everybody – pure and utter violence and a viral violent knockout that is a guarantee from the bastard of bare knuckle to you there we go you can't sell money uh better pay-per-views than that uh everyone should be paying attention and taking notes brandon my man uh continue success uh huge fan of you and just a huge fan of what you did in this last six weeks uh, I don't care what anyone else says. I, I'm a Lambert guy. Got your back, and I uh, can't wait. I'll be there live, Knuckle Mania. I'll see you at weigh-ins looking 135 pounds of pure violence, and we'll see you soon, my man. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.